In this video, I wanted to briefly run through the differences between an impact driver and a power drill, or just sometimes known as a cordless drill or a drill. These devices look very similar, but they have some differences that are worth knowing about if you're in the market. And just to get this clear from the start, they are in many ways interchangeable, but they, again, they have some subtle differences and you wanna really know what you're buying before you buy it. It's not everything is perfect for every job. The kind of standard option that's been around forever is the power drill. It's the more versatile of the two. The impact driver has been gaining a lot of momentum over the past couple of years, and people are finding them more and more attractive, but it's not as versatile as a power drill. Just to give everyone like the, the too long didn't read version, a power drill is really good at drilling, as the name would imply. And it could also drive in screws. That's probably why most people buy it, but it's the best for drilling holes. An impact driver is designed to drive things in. So that could be a screw, that could be a lag screw or a lag bolt, what have you. Can you drill a hole with an impact driver? Yes, but that's not the ideal use for it. And now we'll sort of get into the main differences between the two. And I don't want to get into sort of the motor technology or the engineering inside that we could save for another video. Let's just get into the actual differences between the two. Uh, so if you're out there trying to make a purchase, you'll know which one is right for you. I'm assuming a lot of people know about a cordless drill and they understand this device. So we'll kind of save that. We'll put that one in the back seat. We'll say, look at this impact driver. So what's happening when you're buying an impact driver? What are you getting? So first off, you're getting a device that is smaller and lighter than a typical power drill. Here's the skill. The skill is much larger, and this piece has a giant battery on it. This is a 54 watt hour battery from Makita. So if you were to remove this battery, uh, we won't get into that, but you could see the device is actually quite small. Look at it next to this DeWalt 12 volt drill. It's a good deal smaller than the DeWalt 12 volt, and that's with this giant battery on it. So impact drivers are typically smaller and lighter than power drills. Another big difference is an impact driver has this piece right here. This is called a collet. What a collet does is it holds a drill bit in piece, or it holds an impact driver bit in piece, not technically a drill bit. It holds it right here with a solid piece of metal. And to remove it, you pull this piece and it comes out. You can see the collet right here. It's a solid piece of metal. It's hex shaped. It will only accommodate something that is hex shaped. It doesn't adjust or anything like that. You just pull this to release some ball bearings in here. That's what would fit in this little groove. And you push it in to put it back. You can kind of pull it and if you pull it hard enough, it might come out, but really you're supposed to remove this. So an impact driver has a collet. A power drill has this, this is called a chuck. A chuck is adjustable. It has these little teeth things here and they can tighten down on a, I don't know, on a square piece, on a round drill bit, on a hexagonal uh, Allen shaped sort of bit, similar to an impact driver, but it, the chuck will tighten down. And some have a keyed chuck where you turn a little thing here. Most of the newer ones have a keyless chuck like this. And to open this up, you could just uh, kind of unscrew it or you kind of put this in reverse and you give it a hold. Just make sure it torques not too high. You could bust up your wrist pretty good. So this has an impact drive style head in there, but it is clearly an adjustable chuck that will tighten down in the way uh, you know, you'll see on a lathe or something like that. So chuck versus collet. Obviously a chuck is much more versatile. Another important difference is that an impact driver does not have a clutch. Uh, and I cannot, <laughs> this is probably the single biggest difference to the device. You can see there's no adjustment up here. There's no turny thing over here. And that's because there's no clutch. And uh, what that means is that this device will not stop moving unless you stop pushing the button, you know, and which means it could generate huge amounts of torque and there's nothing to break that torque 
except you dropping the device, you busting up your wrist, or you letting your finger off that button. It is variable speed, right? So you could push down less, medium, more. So while there's only one gear, it's variable speed. But the chuck is different. The chuck has to do with what is stopping this piece from moving when it encounters resistance. And uh, very little is the answer. With the drill bit, you see you have a setting up here. Do you want high speed, high torque? That's a difference, right? And then you have your, this piece is obviously not in great shape, but you have this, this is your clutch adjustment. And this means that the uh, device will stop moving at some point when it acquires a certain amount of force. And that's this. So it's moving, it requires, it encounters resistance, it doesn't move anymore. Impact driver, you try that, and uh, you're gonna have an unpleasant afternoon. Just not gonna stop. Why is that the case? Obviously there's space saving. This, this piece, the clutch is up here. There's a lot of gears, a lot of tiny little gears, and it takes up a lot of space. Clutch is often one of the parts that, that could break. It's the most likely part in your power drill to break. So you're taking out a lot of complexity and you're taking out a lot of size when you drop the clutch. Uh, you're also taking out a lot of versatility, right? The clutch means this can really drill well and if the drill bit gets caught, you don't have to worry about busting up your wrist and having it really twist really hard, which can be extremely unpleasant, especially if you're on a ladder. The drill will have a, I got a drill, like a drill bit like this one and when it encounters force, it can stop, and that happens a lot. With an impact driver, you're driving in a screw or a lag bolt or something like that, and can it encounter, can it like encounter enough resistance to stop? Certainly, but with an impact driver, what you really want is that maximum torque so it can push in a big, I don't have any lag bolts or anything like that, but so it could push in Nothing handy. So it could push in that big lag bolt with sufficient torque and get through. You know, we've all put in a big, this isn't a bolt obviously, but if you made believe this was a bolt, you've all put in a big bolt into a, a, you know, a piece of two by four or four by four or whatever, and had it just stop and you have to go out and get your wrench and start to wrench on the head or a socket or something like that. Uh, that is much less likely to occur with an impact driver. The downside is you really have to hold it and you have to give it, really stabilize the device in order to get it in. It's not about high speed and just, and just punching through things as you would when you drill. You're just super high speed going in and out. You can do it high speed, but it's more about applying maximum torque. So... We've gotten into the collet versus the chuck. We've gotten into the lack of a clutch. We've gotten into the size. Pricing is gonna vary based on the device. This is a single speed impact driver. They also have multi-speed, uh, sorry, single gear impact driver. It also have multi-gear impact drivers. There'll be a little adjustment somewhere on the handle or on the side. And basically, instead of only having this one speed or gear ratio, like that, there'll be multiple options like that. That is not a replacement for a clutch. The two are actually different and it's not gonna stop when it encounters that force, but it can go at a lower speed or a higher speed so you can stop it yourself or you can operate it more easily with this variable speed trigger. This isn't, you know, it's easy to do here. It's much harder to do, again, when you're on a ladder, you're using both hands, you're pushing this as hard as you can into uh, some sort of surface. It's not that easy. So having that gear can help, but it's gonna make the device a lot more expensive. And I think that really should cover it. If there's any questions or comments or uh, things I missed, leave them below. But I think this will be a good explanation of kind of why you want an impact driver or why you want a power drill. Again, if you're only buying one and you're just gonna have one in your garage and you're gonna use it now and then, 
get yourself the drill. The chuck is very useful. The clutch is even more useful. The device is very versatile. These things are very affordable depending, you know, you buy a good brand, but they're still pretty affordable. If you have a couple of drills lying around and you want something different, impact driver could be really helpful, but it's not, it's more of a niche tool and it'll do its job great. It's not something you want to grab every time you need to put something in. It's also worth noting that you might have a bunch of drill bits with these round ends here. This will not fit in your impact driver. So you'll have to buy impact drive bits. That's a different thing. I think most of us just have just many, many drill bits that won't work with our driver. So you gotta go out and buy another kit. A kit won't break you. It's probably, uh, you know, maybe 20 bucks for 30 of them, for 30 bits. And it'll include some, some hex heads and some socket heads and some square drives and some torques and all that. And you'll be set. But again, it's an extra 25, 30 bucks and some extra parts to keep around. So that is the difference between a cordless drill and an impact driver.